Welcome to the Mindful Healers Podcast with Dr. Jesse Mahoney and Dr. Ni Cheng Lang. We are here to help you learn to pause and be present, awaken your breath, and harness the ripple effects of mindfulness for radiant health. We get you. We know you. We are you. We have both been successful on the surface, yet struggling underneath. We have both had cluttered brains, been overwhelmed, and exhausted. We are healers who have found solutions and want to share them with you. Join us here to discover a better way. Welcome to today's podcast on how to create space for what matters most. A reminder that our podcast is not medical advice. The intention of today's episode is to share the idea that it is okay and important to create space for what matters most. We hope you will discover that stepping back is also stepping in. Takeaways are that you can trust yourself and the universe. And when you connect with your priorities, you can create a life of spaciousness and alignment. So the impetus for this podcast was a conversation we had a few weeks ago um, at the end of podcast recording um, about your shift in all of the things that you do. And when we first began working together a couple of years ago, you were teaching mindfulness-based stress reduction almost every quarter. You were, we were working together and offering the Mindful Healers Platinum Package where you could do coaching and MBSR. And you also taught the Mindful Physicians course and you taught it several times a year. And um, this was a focus of something that you did alongside your job as a pulmonologist and alongside your other jobs as um, a mom of two and wife and daughter and all the other things that you do. Lots of word physicians. And what I reflected on is that um, you are almost not doing any of that anymore. And that um, we were thinking about our upcoming Connect in Nature retreat. I think that's how this came up and that that was really the only way to work with you in person, aside from hiring you to give a talk. And so we wanted to talk a little bit about your journey away from entrepreneurship and your journey towards focusing on what matters most to you in this season of life. Do you want to tell us a little bit more um, about your journey and some of the important learnings? Absolutely. So a couple of years ago, I founded my mindfulness company, Awaken Breath. And I used to teach, as you had mentioned, all of those different longitudinal courses when in retrospect, the time that all of those courses took, it was eight weeks for a mindfulness-based stress reduction. And then the mindful physicians course is a 12 week program. And right now I don't do that anymore. And it's been a very conscious decision on my part. And I want to say that it really did take quite some time to be at peace with that decision. And it was absolutely the right decision, especially with how my life has unfolded. I realized looking back now that it's been the most self-compassionate and therefore the right thing to do for me. And in fact, in general, I like to bring up this question because I know how much you love questions. Mm-hmm. What would self-compassion do? And I think that this is a helpful question when you are trying to decide. So my stepping back from leading my own courses and having to market them and trying to enroll them has actually been an act of self-compassion. And I really have shifted my focus to my family, particularly for my adolescent and also now five-year-old who's going to be entering kindergarten. And also to practice medicine on my own terms now that I have passed my integrative medicine boards uh, a couple of months ago, I started doing group clinic visits within the time frame of my usual clinic schedule. So I wasn't adding more on top of my practice of medicine. I was actually building in innovation that way. 
I just wanted to reflect on two things you said there. One was the self-compassion. And I know a lot of people struggle with self-compassion. So you could also ask, what would kindness do? And kindness would be kindness to yourself. And some people are better able to give kindness to themselves than self-compassion. And so if self-compassion still is a struggle for you or you it feels foreign, um, you could ask this question, what would kindness do? And kindness often doesn't stops doing things. I think we often think about what, what we need to do or add, but kindness often does less. And then um, the other thing you mentioned was this idea of practicing medicine on your own terms. And that is something that comes up in a lot of um, online spaces. And I just wanted to point out that it's usually doing more and creating a new business and doing something different and, and stepping out. And it's really doing more. Um, coming from a space of scarcity mindset that like if you um, you have to create it yourself because it can't exist somewhere else and the jobs that are out there aren't good. And I know there are a lot that aren't good, but some of it is just tweaking what you do. And so I just want to offer that it doesn't mean um, practicing medicine on your own terms, that you have to burn down the house and start over. And that for many people, practicing medicine on their own terms is actually going back to clinical medicine, doing what they were trained to do, only doing that and allowing themselves to focus on things that they love or adding in maybe a little bit of integrative medicine, but sometimes it's a 1% shift or a 5% shift and that's all you need to do. And so I think that there's a lot of messaging out there for physicians that it's not enough to just practice medicine and take care of your family. And so practicing medicine on your own terms could actually be just enjoying the job that you have um, and making some slight changes to make it in a little bit more of alignment. Yeah, just choosing a different relationship with how you practice medicine, that shift in and of itself with mindfulness and coaching. And you might not necessarily time-wise be practicing it any differently, but how you approach it, that in and of, of itself can be tremendously transformative and healing. And I think that is one of the things that um, we work on in coaching so much is your thoughts about it and um, how you describe it and the stories you tell about it. And if you tell a story that that's an amazing career and this is exactly what you want to be doing, you enjoy it. And if you think it's not enough and you have to have a whole um, side gig and entrepreneurial um, success story in order to be a happy physician, then you end up always being dissatisfied. And your story reminds me actually of this challenge that many of us have with being satisfied. And part of the work is to allow yourself to be satisfied with where you are. And oftentimes, once we decide that, we're fine. And we're so <laughs> trained to think, What's wrong? What's different? What do I need to do? How do I need to make sure I'm going to be okay? Um, you know, some of those thought patterns are the ones we were trained to in medicine, right? We have to catastrophize. What terrible things going to happen? I don't have to plan for a rainy day. Um, and, you know, there aren't enough jobs and there's something, you know, it's, and so just realizing that that's our brain, but what if you actually were happy with where you were? So in the beginning of this season of my life, I definitely did have guilt where, I thought that I should, as a physician entrepreneur who is a mindfulness teacher, be teaching more mindfulness and setting up more courses for more people to enroll in, and that I should be putting myself out there more. More is better. Uh huh. That, that thought mindset. Yep. That calling out the more is better. Uh, and definitely noticing that I was coming from a place of scarcity and fear of missing out, especially in the physician entrepreneurial world and also my people pleasing tendencies. But because in my gut, deep down, I trusted myself enough to know that not doing those things for me to do more of this past year was absolutely the right thing to do, even though it felt uncomfortable at the time. And so reflecting back, it has been how I have created the space for what matters most to me. So there has been this pivot of sorts in practicing medicine in the way that I want to practice it. I have been incorporating more integrative medicine into those group clinic visits that I really truly treasure. And that's where I get to teach the mindfulness longitudinally. 
And then also in focusing on my children's unique needs currently in their season of life. And together in doing that, I'm also focusing on my own physical health in getting back into playing volleyball and joining a league in over 20 years. I'm ecstatic that I'm able to do that for myself and also to be able to play with my my eldest and my husband has been such a joy you've made room for joy yeah which is something that matters most through playing and doing something that i used to love to do and coming back to that i also want a dragon boat race more this year and so i'm creating space for that and so in order to do both, I'm prioritizing a lot more exercise because I do have to um, keep my physical body in a conditioned state to enable me to participate in those sports safely. One thing you brought up is the discomfort. And I just always like to point out that many of us were trained that discomfort is a problem and it means that we're doing it wrong. And yet when you pivot, it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. and it's moving through that, like, but you were uncomfortable because you were doing too many things before and out of alignment. And so there's discomfort either way and realizing that this discomfort is not a problem. It's just a matter of when you change, there's always discomfort. But I think for those of us that were changed in medicine to think that when we're uncomfortable, it's all hypervigilance is needed and something terrible might happen. It keeps us from making changes, especially stepping back. And you mentioned that scarcity mindset, which is so um, influential for so many of us that if we miss out or if we don't do this right now, that we'll never be able to do it. And I'm pretty darn certain you'll be able to teach a lot more mindfulness in your um, career. The other thing I wanted to point out is that the stepping back and doing less um, takes tremendous courage. And I think it's uh, we have to notice that. We often think it takes courage to do something or to do the hard thing, but doing less also takes courage. And the other thing it takes is trust. Trust that you can do it. Trust that you can trust yourself and you can trust the universe. And um, I always like to say it takes, you don't have to have an abundant mindset. You have to have a trusting mindset to get out of scarcity. Because scarcity is distrust, and it's a worry that's catastrophizing, something terrible is going to happen. So I think a lot of people feel like the opposite of scarcity is um, abundance, but it's not. It's a trust that it's going to be okay. And so I think, um, and trust that you can make good decisions, which of course you can. One of the things that I think um, is really frustrating for me is this messaging that physicians have to do it all. And if they don't do it all, they're not adequate and this, they, there's really a capitalization of this fear of missing out. It's like, if I don't do this, something terrible will happen. And yet I think physicians are the most resourceful, well-trained, um, problem-solving people that they actually don't have to do it all because they can figure it out if something happens. But I think we don't think that we're enough and we don't think we can figure it out. And so that's where that trust that like, wow, I am actually super double, triple trained to solve problems when things are complicated. And so we should be the best people to figure it out. This doesn't mean that you don't take care of yourself or you're not planning for the future, but it's staying out of that fear of missing out that you mentioned and that scarcity mindset and catastrophizing. And I think when you realize how that's impacting your choices and keeping you from living the life you want to live, it's a really um, powerful choice. So I just want to advocate that like we to decide that you're not in danger and to decide that um, you have everything you need to be successful and you can learn, adapt, grow, shift, change, pivot. I work with so many physicians who do. And once they decide they're going to do it, it's fine. They have no trouble. We're some of the most creative, innovative people in the world. And so the scarcity mindset is actually not true. Um, and I think it, it taps into all of our fears. And so if we can realize that these messages about how you have to have all of these backup plans and figure out a way out is not, I don't think we actually do. Like we can actually figure out amazing things. And sometimes in the moment when you're faced with a challenge, that's when the really great idea comes. And so I just want our listeners to really connect with this idea of why they're doing what they're doing and is it necessary and what's the 
feeling and thought patterns behind it to make sure now if entrepreneurship is your dream and that is the thing that matters to you most, that's very different. Mm -hmm. Um, Or the work that you are doing. In my case, it's the work that I do as an entrepreneur. That matters most to me. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that's very authentic. Um, but I have had to stop doing certain pieces of it to make, to have room for what matters most. And I think um, it is really getting out of that fear of missing out. I know for women physicians too, there's a lot of messaging, like you have to take the leadership roles because you'll never get another one, that you always get another one. Um, and so I would advocate that we really can and should step back and you can always step in. And I will say I went from working full-time to 70%, back to more than full-time, back to 70%, depending on what was going on in my family. And I think that that is available and accessible to all of us, especially if we expect it and we make it a normal thing. We're not um, feeling ashamed of the challenges. As opportunities arise, you can trust yourself that you have the discernment as to whether or not you first want to take that new opportunity or not. Um, And like you said, you can always change your mind later and other opportunities will arrive. Uh, Trusting that you will make the right decision for you in that moment, because the moment really does shift and your circumstances will shift. And having your own back when you make that decision. And I think that's something that you have done really beautifully is I made this decision. It's the important thing for me to be doing right now. And I'll figure it out later in the future if I want what I want to do. I think so many people think we make one decision and that's the end. And it it, it makes the whole course be whatever it is. And so we don't have our own backs when we make the decision. It's like, well, it didn't turn out well, so it was a terrible decision. But it's not. You made the best decision you could in the moment with the information you had with what was going on with your family. And you will make that again tomorrow. And this is a process for me. Like this is uh, by no means like I've got all of this figured out. Because even celebrating with you as we're here on the eve of the Mindful Healers Connect and Nature Retreat, I had shared that I had passed my integrative medicine boards, an old part of me crept up and started asking, okay, what's next? What's the next training? What do I need to certify in to of next? Of course you did. Yes. <laughs> what can I learn more of? And yeah, granted, I love learning. That's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, I needed to really remind myself that in actuality, in this particular moment, we are enough and we are actually more than enough in this moment right now, can we give ourselves permission to pause and simply be, to actually be human beings? So that being said, in the season that I'm in, I am allowing myself to be a human being. I'm being much more protective of my boundaries, especially with how I spend my time, because my intention is the title of this podcast. It's to have spaciousness to allow for what matters most to me. And a lot of that may include some unexpected circumstances, but I do want to highlight my desire to connect with my family and also for new ways of connecting with those that I seek to heal. So that being said, I'm not not an entrepreneur. I am still an entrepreneur, but I'm doing things in my business slightly differently. And I am being very protective of what projects I put out and also of what I choose to be part of. And so please don't let this podcast dissuade you from (laughs) contacting me if I can help in any way to deepen your mindfulness practice or get you started. Uh, I am still available for workshops and consultations, uh, but I myself in the foreseeable future am not going to be starting any brand new courses for the time being. And we shall see what happens next. Yeah. Always opportunities to do things in the future. Um, I like to think of this idea of making space for what matters most. It's a bit of a form of mindful um, minimalism. And it's 
mindful minimalism is not having very little few things. It's having the things that matter to you. Mm -hmm. And so the work I think for most people is to figure out what matters to me. We often just give a generic list of the people that matter to me, but I would actually challenge all of you to figure out what matters to you most right now. And we usually leave ourselves off the list, by the way, we're usually there for our family. And I also want to honor that. I think part of your stepping back was for you too. You oh, mentioned the sports, but for sure. Yeah, definitely. And um, so I would say that for all of you, you matter most because if you're not um, healthy, then um, you can't be there for those who also matter most to you, but to allow yourself to figure out what matters most to you, even if it seems silly. I think some people, you know, ceramics and creative expression matters a huge amount. And maybe this word most is stressful. And so what matters to you? And just make sure there's enough room for the things that matter for you. Because there isn't a hierarchy of what is more valuable or um, less valuable. And so I think taking the judgment out of that and letting yourself, um, as I always say, hand to heart, we usually know what matters most, or we usually know what matters or what our priorities are. And being intentional about that, I think so much of us are not mindful and we react to what's happening. And it's like, they've asked me to do this, I'll do this, or um, I need a backup plan, so I'm going to build this side gig. And I think just realizing, pausing, as you said, pausing and breathing and um, thinking and being really authentic in what is for you, because what's for you is going to be different than what's for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and I think that's true for all of our listeners. What's what's important to them is going to be very different for each human. The spaciousness created allows you to do more of what it is and also to be more of who you want to be right here, right now. The other thing you mentioned um, a couple of times was enjoy, and it actually allows you space to enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, you can feel joy, but I think many of us actually enjoying things should be pretty high up on the list of things that matter. And many of us don't allot very much time to that, or we only allot it on vacation. We do all the things we enjoy, but the rest of the year, we just work, work, work. And so this idea of pausing and creating space, maybe it doesn't even have to be what matters most, but what you enjoy and what what matters or what is important to you. Yep, the spaciousness has allowed me to step back into sports that I enjoy. And for me right now, that is a good use of my time. Yeah. And as we close this podcast, we always like to end with some reflection questions. So inviting you to reflect, what are you shooting yourself into doing? And how might you step back to step in and how can you create space for what matters to you so again one of the only ways to work with me chang in person is to come to the connect in nature retreat i am super grateful that um i'm still on her list of things that matter most <laughs> and this podcast is still on the list and the connect in nature retreat is still on the list and um, we would love to have you come and join us next year. And this podcast is being released at the end of July. And through the end of July, um, we are offering a chance to come. If you sign up for the 2024 Connected Nature Retreat, you can come at the 2023 pricing. Um, so if you're listening to this a day or two, it comes out. Um, set yourself up for success. I imagine that that retreat will help you um, step out of the fear of missing out and the people pleasing and step into connecting with who you are, trusting yourself and living a life of more alignment. Part of why I'm still part of this podcast and also co-leading the Mindful Healers Connect and Nature Retreat with you, Jesse, is because I enjoy. So for me, it is time well spent. It brings me joy. It's fun. And so with that being said, please stay on after the sound of the singing bowl for our mindful moment offering that we hope you will enjoy. As always, if you want to declutter your mind, be more present, and start truly living your one wild and precious life, come find us at the mindfulhealerspodcast.com. Work with one of us. Work with both of us. Start or up-level your mindfulness practice. 
discover how mindful coaching can change your life. Or even better, do both as part of our Mindful Healers programs and retreats. You can find links to find out more about our programs and join our communities at themindfulhealerspodcast.com. Reach out and get started on your journey to a life better lived today. The content of this podcast is not meant to be medical or life advice. If you choose to participate in our mindful moments, please do so safely. Welcome to this mindful moment offering. This is an invitation for you to close your eyes, lower your gaze a few inches in front of you if it's safe to do so. And as you're ready, bringing your hands to your heart, pushing in a little with the heel of your palm, circulating some oxytocin, the feel good bonding hormone. Settling in to notice the sensations of the hands atop the heart. Allowing the mind and the body to be here at the same place and same time. Bringing into your mind's eye someone that you love unconditionally and sending loving and kind intentions to this loved one. May you be well, may you find peace, may you be happy, may you be free from harm. May you be well, may you find peace, may you be happy, may you be free from harm. And thanking that loved one for being part of this practice, broadening the intention for loving kindness to your entire community, your neighbors, the grocery store clerks, male men and women, the hospitals with all of the healers and patients. your entire community, remembering to include yourself in this larger community and sending those same loving and kind intentions to the collective we. May we be well, may we find peace, may we be happy, may we be free from harm. May we be well, may we find peace, may we be happy, may we be free from harm and sending some gratitude to this community. Many members, including yourself, are helpers in some capacity and sending gratitude for all the helping that occurs in this community. Now bringing into your mind's eye an image of you and sending yourself those same loving and kind intentions because you are also deserving of those. May I be well, may I find peace, may I be happy, may I be free from harm. May I be well, may I find peace, may I be happy, may I be free from harm. Sending gratitude To yourself for practicing loving kindness, focusing on the sensations of the hands against the chest, inviting you to change the hand closest to your heart into a fist as a sign of strength and unconditional support bolstered by the hand atop, forever unconditional support and love. Thanking yourself for practicing. <laughs> 